So today, I'm going to be doing one of my favorite season preview of this year's season preview series, which is talk about Minnesota United. And it's been a while off season for the Loons, where it's kind of been a roller coaster off season. Where in the beginning of the off season, it looked like it was doom and gloom with this team. I mean, they were selling off pieces. They weren't replacing some of the pieces that they were selling off. And a lot of people uh, thought that this team was going to be heading to a rebuild and that they might have just blow, blow up their team. But then, as the off season go goes along, the signing finally happen and that it seems like they are not yet ready to blow up the current core that they they have and they try to also add some more more attacking pieces especially trying to add more number nines in this team because that's been one well, of the big issue with this team like this team has not had a reliable number nine ever since Christian Ramirez left this team and we still don't know to to this day that whether or not if they will have have a decent reliable number nine that can score the goals for this team Speaking of scoring goals, uh, that was a big issue with with this team last season. Uh, you know, besides finishing 13, 10, and 11 and finish with 49 points and finish 5th in the Western Conference, they only scored 42 goals last season. And that seems like a very generous number because last season, this team, it was an incredibly fr frustrating team to watch in terms of goal scoring. And it's not because of the fact that they're they're not not trying to basically put the ball into the back of net, but it's just the finishing was just absolutely horrendous this la last season. And hence, that's why they only scored 42 goals and one, was one of the few, is, uh, was the team that was scored one of the fewest amount of goals that made it into the playoffs. Uh, they conceded 44 goals, which is okay. I mean, you know, it's not as, as good as the, the season that they had in 2020 and 2019 when their defense was definitely locked down but it's still not not ter terrible it was kind of kind of average and their goal differential was minus two one of the few teams to make it to the playoffs with a negative goal differential and as i mentioned they finished fifth in the western conference but before that uh they finished fourth in 2020 finished fourth again in 2019 to make the playoffs for the first time in franchise history and then in the first two year that was really the dark time of this franchise though it was kind of part of the free year plan that adrian heath had where you know the first two years it's gonna suck uh with the that they finished 10th and finishing in ninth place but the free year plan kind of worked in 2019 as i mentioned with them making the playoffs for the first time in their franchise history now in terms of some of the signings that they made and you know there's going to be more more signings to be done because i know uh there is actually two players that is not on the the in list but i'm pretty sure it's going it's those deals are going to to be done and they're going to be a minnesota united player is them getting getting Luis almaria back to, to this team and also also bringing in honduran d mid in Kervin ariaga but as for now uh they of course sign a guy that you know to this day i still don't know how how to pronounce this this guy name i'm gonna try and say it's probably bongo Kuli huga what i mean again i might have just absolutely but butchered that name but I'll, I'll get better as the season goes along uh then you they also bought back abu dan Lati from nashville sc you know that's going to be interesting to see dan Lati back in this team because i, I remember when the loons drafted dan Lati back in 2017 as part of their expansion season you know dan Lati shows some potential and unfortunately ever since he he left this team he hasn't really been showing that that potential to be a decent number nine and being kind of a journeyman and now coming back to familiar territory it's going to be interesting to see whether or not if he can he can get things going i mean i i will say that he'll probably maybe be a little bit lower on on the depth chart but he'll be a guy that i i can expect coming off the bench and maybe be be a super sub, sub kind of impact because one thing i also know about dan Lotti is that he has a lot of speed and you know if you're a super sub coming off the bench speed is definitely one element that you you want in your game so you can basically burn out those tire the defender out out there when you come in but besides that they add some more depth in the back line by bringing O'Neill Fisher uh then they of course got Aaron Dick to add more depth in terms of the goalkeeping position from the Columbus crew and then in the draft they also got a guy that I don't know how to pronounce his last name pro properly but I know his first name is Tani uh the last name I'm gonna say it's like Ula Wasay that that's how, how how you you pronounce it but yeah he of course was picked up as the only player in the super draft by this Minnesota United team. Now, in terms of players that they they lost this offseason, uh, they definitely did lose some depth, depth pieces, especially in the midfield and attack. Uh, one of the big pieces that they lost was young Greg Wish, who, again, I just feel like 
like it's so unfortunate that he he eventually surely left this team because you know it seems like he kind of fell out of favor la last season with adrian heath but at least the good news is i still get a chance to see him play uh now that he, he's, he's a san jose earthquakes player uh then you got ethan finley going to austin fc this one def definitely hurts because ethan finley has been played such a big part of this team for the past couple of season and you know i i, I don't 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 mind the fact that they decided to let let him go because you know you you kind of feel like he, he he's just more more of a death piece nowadays and he is also starting to get a little bit older but you know he's also kind of a fan fan favorite i always love e ethan finley so it's it, it kind of sucks the fact that he's going to be moving on to another team and joining austin fc then you got yugo Raitala going back to his native country in finland by joining xjk helsinki uh then you got ozzy alonso going to atlanta united of what could be his swan song season and then they also lost Adrian Zidane going to Shard FC. And then players that cur currently is still a free agent after they were cut at the end of season roster move is Juan Agudelo. Uh Thomas Chacon actually was was cut during this off season, so technically he didn't. He 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 actually was was not cut when the end of season roster move is done. But thank God that that they got out of that contract because again Thomas Chacon, it, it's just so unfortunate with with what happened into him and ha how the loons just never develop him to the player that they hope that they envision and unfortunately he's going to go down as one of the worst dp signing we we've seen only in this club history but also in in league hi history where they literally sign a guy that what only played like six mi minutes and he occupies the dp spot uh and then of course they they also decide to cut ties with an end of audi this off season and he's still a free agent now optimism for this minnesota united team so you know they had more pieces on the attack again you know scoring was a huge huge concern so it's not a big surprise they decide to add some more attacking pieces and especially you know if Luis armaria is going to be back in this team i mean i i can't wait until till i i see the the combination between armaria and reynoso once again i mean i kind of saw a little bit of that uh back in 2020 when when you know Amarillo played for this team for the first couple little games, and you know he definitely he, he have have proven his worth because in his first two game, I think he sc he he scored in both of the game and already looked like a player that can be a double digit goal scorer. And then of course the injuries happen and the the pause obviously didn't help his confidence. But you know with a healthy Amarillo and especially with him t t seems to be an incredible form with with the club that he is with right now in LDU Quito. So if it tells me he, he he is gonna be finally the missing piece that this te team need, needs. And then of course uh the other piece that they're also going to add is is Carvin Ariaga who I heard he's a very deep decent defensive midfielder and he's probably gonna be the guy that's gonna be replacing Ozzy Alonso in, in that D mid mid and in that number six spot. Now uh the other thing that is opt I'm optimistic about this team is that most of the new signing from the summer should be selling and, and can finally show show their potential and quality. So guys like like Fragapani and Andrian who knew who you know I feel feel like as the, the season go goes along they started to kind of finally sell in with this team and my hope is that both of those guys can actually finally show their quality as they head in into their, their second season because you know I think the, the reason why both of these guys, or at least in the case of Adrian, who knew of how he, he, he struggled so much with this team, is that you know he he, he was kind of, kind of, kind of struggling because he needs time to kind of settle it into this team. I mean, it's never easy for a player that have never been to this country and been into a new league, and that it takes time to to settle in. But you know, as think times goes on, he definitely got much better, and I'm hoping that's going to be the same same case one again heading into the season and especially from what i also heard of him working much better in a two striker system and that this is also the reason why the loons decided to get get Amaria back so that they can play that two striker system and add more di dynamic attack on on a team that really struggled la last season uh in in the final third and also in the finishing department now that being said uh the concern with this team is the fact that despite the fact that this team has quality the underachieving. I mean, this that's been kind of a Minnesota sports thing for for a very long time. Where whenever a team tends to have some potential, they will underachieve. And last season we shot, saw it in first hand. Where yes, I know they made it to the playoffs again, but don't let 
let the, them making it into the playoffs and finishing in fifth in the standings distract you from the fact that this was a very poor, poor team in my standard. Like, this team, you know, uh, it was hey, there was a lot of underachiever in this team. A, a team that was supposed to be an MLS Cup contender, and f they fell way short of that target. And I'm just concerning that it's going to happen again for this upcoming season where there's going to be guys that are not pulling their weight and not actually, actually living up to their their potential and yeah let, let's just hope that's not going to be the case uh the other concern obviously is the finishing um you know again bring bring some attacking pieces it's nice and all but you know my my biggest concern with this team and until i actually see this team start to finally have him have a, a a number nine and not just only rely on robin Ludd as the as the potent goal, goal scorer of this team i'm gonna still have concern with with the finishing of this team and at least from what i also heard uh from their preseason game against the portland timbers a couple of days ago that was still a problem uh they i've heard that they they actually have looked much better on the attack but once again the finishing was a pro problem which you know i know i don't want to read too much in into preseason because you know preseason resort usually doesn't mean mean uh, a lot but that maybe is a little bit concerning the fact that this team still have that issue now again if they they can fix that issue and as as the season goes along, if their finishing is much better, then yeah, it feels like they finally saw solve it. And it and it's also not an easy, easy solution to, to solve too in terms of trying to solve a team that ha has bad bad finisher because you know you 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 just hope that the these guys that is currently in the roster and then of course some of the new guys that were brought in they can be a lot better in terms of their finishing finishing quality. The, and if they are supposed to do then that's the problem solved if not then the problem of course is is still there and it's gonna uh, i'm just gonna be pulling my head e e every time watching the, this te team play whenever they miss a big opportunity and then of course the last thing that is concerned for this team and this is something that i think in a couple of years this is going to be a big concern unless this team addresses it is the back line so the back line i know it, it's still relatively solid but you are also starting to see guys in that back line that is starting to, to age a little bit i mean michael boxo he's now in his his 30s uh the he he's almost in his mid 30s and even in the fullback position position in metanier he's also in his thir 30s too and not to mention the fact that this team also lack some depth in terms of the back line and also in in the midfield this is very concerning for for a te team that you know you if you're going to go through a se season and you you want to have a good good back line you better hope that that back line does not get injured or slow down a as the year goes along because one thing with a aging aging player is that they do get slowed down throughout the a, a long season and that's going to be something that I i'm going to be watching out for this team because i, I think la last season it, it definitely wasn't evident near the latter part of the the season where this back line was absolutely horrendous down the stretch and i i wonder is that a lot to do with them just kind of getting exhausted because it's near the end of the season and because of an aging back line or the fact that you know this team te this back line has been playing so so much minute and i feel like th this is kind of the same case again for this upcoming season where they're kind of forced to have to play play a lot of minutes too because of the lack of depth that the, this te team had uh in that that back line now in terms of mvp for this minnesota united team i mean it's pretty obvious who's the mvp it's got to be a man el reynoso i mean reynoso is still the heart and soul of this team and i think he he admits it last season that it was it was a rough season for for him and that and that he definitely did not live up to the hype that he had when he came into this league and then this offseason there was even that scare incident the fact that you know he got he he got thrown into jail down in argentina and that there was a concern that he might not, not be able to be a loons player anymore because of all the the allegation that he suffered thank goodness that now that is that is basically they they took control but the other thing that i will also be a concern with him is that whether or not if that could be a distraction heading into this upcoming coming season and i hope it's not going to be because again everything goes for reynoso in in this attack and if he's not on his game this team is not going going to be be good going forward in the attack now in terms of comeback player as i'm gonna switch my a, a, a different black pan because the one i was using uh i think it's running out of ink 
I'm going to go with Hassani Dotson. Uh, there's a lot of player on this team I, I would say is a comeback player because a lot of them underachieve and that, that you know, I could have easily picked, picked one of those players that underachieved last season as a comeback player. But I'm going to go with Dotson because, you know, last season it was a rough year, year for him. And a, a lot of that has to do with him just kind of playing out of position for, for most of his time. Now, I'm really hoping that for this upcoming season he can get get himself back into that that number six role that he, he preferred to do and despite the fact that Dotson throughout his career he said that he's a ver very versatile player I still prefer him to be in that number six position and now that you know Ozzy Alonso no longer occupied that spot and also Jan Gregorich no longer occupy that spot too that maybe give him him a chance to slot into that role though that being said uh, I did said that you know it seems like they are chasing to trying to get get this Honduran de defensive midfielder in Carvin Arriaga, and that it seems like he, he's most likely going to be the replacement for both of those guys I mentioned that, that this team lost this offseason instead of Dotson, and that most likely Dotson is going to be shift some, somewhere where else. And, you know, if he is going to shift somewhere else, let's just hope maybe it's it's in a spot where he's at least going to be very, he's going to be comfortable. Uh, that That is, if he plays that out of position so I think the fullback position is one area that I think I think he could be com comfortable if he is going to be shift out of position definitely not on the wing though I mean last season I have uh, I, I still cannot believe Adrian Heath tried to to experiment by putting Dotson on the wing and how that just end up terribly every every single time and I hope that's not going to be the, the same case for this upcoming season now, in terms of expectation for this team, I mean, make the playoffs. I mean, it is pretty obvious that, you know, the expectation for, for this team is to once again be a playoff contender and maybe be a t team that could be an MLS Cup contender. I mean, I'm not going to say that this is going to be an MLS Cup contender because I know for sure that there are better teams in the Western Conference than, than this this Minnesota United team for this upcoming year. But maybe they can play the underdog role again. I mean, this has been kind of the staple of this team and the stable of under Adrian Heave where they love to, to be the underdog team they love to label themselves as the underdog and eventually make a deep run into the playoffs and I guess maybe they get a chance to do so now because I feel like maybe maybe when expectation is not actually put on this team maybe this is when this team of course thrive but when expectation is put on this team like it was last season you can see how this team just kind of crumble and stuff like that and then, of course, the other expectation is fire reliable number nine goal scored. Again, I'm thinking most likely that's going to be Luis Amaria, who, again, if he, he is going to come back to this team. Well, it's not if, it's when he's co coming back to this team because that deal is pretty much close to being done. He's going to be the guy that guy that will be the, the, the first reliable number nine goal scorer that, that we had on this team since Christian Ramirez depart from this team a couple of years ago. But... Either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video. And if you're a Minnesota United fan like myself, what's your optimism, your concern, and most importantly, your expectation for this upcoming season. And again, I'm ready to get hurt again by watching this team because there's just so many time last season that, you know, I'm glad I actually did not did not actually decide to kind of all just really pull my, my hair, hair out like every every single game because I probably would go ball after watching it, this team play last, last season with with me have to pull my ha hair out because of how frustrated I've seen with this team clearly have potential to be an MOS c contender and they fall short because of, of either bad bad defending in, in some games or the fact that this team just could not finish if their lives depend on it but either way hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time